hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial now in the previous video we discussed about computer networking and data communications the introductory concepts so in this video we are going to focus on the data communication basic concepts that part so we are going to brush over certain basic things related to data communications okay so let's start so most important is the basic definition so what is data communication so data communication is the exchange or sharing of data or information between two or more devices or nodes with the help of some transmission medium okay so the two or more devices they are also called as nodes it can be computer mobile phones it can be a printer or a scanner or any other hardware device and the data which is exchanged or transmitted between the devices can be in the form of text alphabets or numbers images audio video that is the data or information which is transmitted the form of data which is transmitted and the transmission medium it can be air it can be metal cable or wiring twisted pair cable coaxial cable optical fibers okay the means by the way by which the physical transmission takes place the mode okay it can be either wire or wireless so this is the basic definition of data communication so from this we understand that data communication requires two important things first is the hardware the physical equipment okay the computer the phone the printer the scanner the device the hardware device and the second one is the collection or group of information the data okay the program which is the software part so both the combination of hardware and software is necessary for data communication to take place if only the data or information is present but there is no means of communication between the hardware devices there is no hardware device how can you send the data if only the hardware devices the equipments are present but there is no data so there is nothing to be transmitted nothing to be exchanged nothing to be shared so the two of them the hardware and the software the physical equipment and the program the collection of data or information is necessary for data communication to take place okay now there are certain characteristics of the data communication which should be taken into account before considering a particular form of data communication means the way to transmit data <coughs> sorry from one place to another from one device to another and those characteristics are delivery accuracy timeliness and jitter okay these are the four characteristics which we are going to discuss so the first characteristics is delivery now the communication system it must transfer the data at the correct place at the correct destination okay it must only be received by the user or the party which the sender wants to for example if someone else is sending his or her confidential information uh, over 
an email or any other uh, platform and that information is received by somebody else a stranger that would be a huge problem okay so the data communication system must ensure that the communication takes place only between the intended parties the sender receiver pair the intended sender receiver pair not any other third party so that is the one of the characteristics of data communication the next characteristic is accuracy okay the data which is transmitted which is communicated it must be accurate okay it must not get modified tampered or altered during the course of transmission suppose you are sending a particular information let's say a particular sequence of numbers okay which is necessary for a particular task okay a particular sequence of numbers let's say a particular password okay i would not encourage you to send passwords over um, any platform but let's say for the example if you are sending a particular password for a particular task and uh, when that information is received by the intended party the receiver the numbers are jumbled okay or some of the numbers or or if it is a alphanumeric code a special characters are allowed some of the characters are missing that would lead to inaccuracy it means the communication process the communication system it is faulty it is inaccurate so it would cause error and problems for both the sender and the receiver so the data communication system must ensure that the data which is transmitted it must be delivered at the sender uh, at the receiver accurately with no loss of information next is timeliness it means the system must deliver the data in a fixed period of time okay which is so uh, which is uh, known to both the sender and the receiver for example if uh, you're sending an email an urgent email related to some important task and you want that it should it should uh, on the it is necessary that the, that information that particular piece of information which you are sending over the email is used at that instant immediately and you send that email but because of some uh, malfunction that email uh, was not received by the receiver okay to whom you sent that then it would cause a huge problem okay so suppose you are uh, sending some package through courier and you want the package to be received by the receiver within let's say two or three days and it took one week okay in that case the transmission system is faulty because it did not uh, deliver the package within the fixed allotted period of time which was two to three days it took one week four days extra so the data communication system must ensure that the data the information is delivered in the intended with the fixed allotted period of time if the if a data communication system has a time period okay of delivery of let's say one day then it must ensure that the data is delivered within one day if it is one week it must ensure that the data is delivered within one week for email and other platforms the data is transmitted almost instantaneously okay within a fraction of a second uh, the email is sent and is received by the receiver so it must it must be that in case of email it must not take several minutes or several hours in that case it would lead to uh, problems for both the sender and the receiver so
so this is where the timeliness of the data communication system comes into play and the next characteristic is jitter <coughs> okay jitter refers to variation in the data packet arrival time so what it essentially means that the data the the, the information which uh, is being transmitted it does not arrive or it does not it, it does not get transmitted at one go it means some portion of the data or information arrived within a certain time frame and the other portion arrived uh, a little bit longer than that suppose a particular piece of information got transmitted within uh, let's say two or three seconds for example and the remaining portion the remaining portion took 20 minutes so that 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 period that gap is uh, which caused a variation in the data packet arrival time okay one took two to four seconds other took 20 40 minutes so that gap is called as jitter so jitter must be avoided the data transmission times must be even must be uniform all must take an equal interval of time in that case the communication process will be smooth so uh, the data communication system must avoid jitter okay next is the components of the data communication system so these are the basic things okay uh, the first important component is the message the data the information which is to be communicated it can either be in the form of text number pictures audio video etc next is the sender it is the person the person or, or organization or the device that sends the data the message it can be uh, a person or an individual or an organization using a computer phone or a workstation to send the data next is the receiver it is also another person or organization or group that uses a computer or phone to receive the data next the transmission medium the mode of connectivity the way in which the physical pathway by which the data or the message travels from the sender to the receiver it can be through air it can be through metallic wires or cablings twisted pair cable coaxial cable optical fibers next is the protocol so protocol is uh, is basically a set of rules and regulations that govern the data communication okay so it is essentially the it fix it 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 it, it uh, lays down the terms and conditions of the data communication system and all the terms and conditions so the protocol uh, serves that purpose okay without the protocol the two devices may get connected but cannot communicate for example two persons one speaks french other speaks spanish okay the french does not understand spanish the spanish does not understand french if you put them in a room and you uh, tell them ask them to talk to have a conversation with them they may talk whatever they want but either none of them will understand what the other person is saying okay so the protocol provides a common ground okay so it ensures that the data communication between the sender and the receiver takes place with a common uh, uh, with a common uh, let's say the common language okay both the sender and the receiver have the communication which is compatible okay if one is sending data the it is compatible with the receiver the receiver which the this data which is sent by the receiver to the sender it is compatible with the sender so that is the main objective of the protocol okay it lays down the rules regulations terms and conditions of the data communication system okay so the different forms of data which we have already discussed they can be text numbers images audio 
video etc okay so one must ensure what is the type of the form of data which can be transmitted over a communication if it is text then it must be in text if it is in numbers it should be in numbers if it is in images or audio video it must be in that there are communication systems which allow all of them or there are also communication systems which allow only one of them so one must understand it one must know what type of what form of data is allowed in the communication process for example if one is writing letters then only text and numbers are allowed if one is sending information over email then all of them are allowed you can send audio you can send video if you are using some social media platform then also all of the data forms are allowed so it depends what communication technique you are using if it is uh, you are having a telephonic conversation then only audio is allowed okay uh, in case of uh, yes that okay in case of letters only text and numbers in case of telephonic conversations only audio in case of social uh, media communication all of them are allowed so like that next is the modes of communication so there are generally three main modes of communication simplex half duplex and full duplex so we'll discuss about them okay the simplex mode of communication in the simplex mode of communication the communication takes place only in one direction it is unidirectional as in on a one way street only one can send data the other can only receive the other does not have the capability to send to transmit only one can transmit the other can receive so the one of the examples of the simplex mode is uh, all the broadcasting communications okay television broadcasting radio broadcasting only the station sends or transmits the data it can be audio it can be video and audio combined in case of television in case of radio it is audio the receivers it means the radio receivers they do not have the capability to uh give feedback okay you can only watch the programs on the television you cannot give your feedback at that instant you can only hear the, uh, the 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 programs on the radio you cannot give your feedback you cannot you cannot uh, communicate back with the station at that instant so that is an example of the simplex mode of communication okay so as you can see in simplex mode there is only data flow in one direction from one device to the other device 1 is the sender device 2 is the receiver device 2 cannot send data it cannot become the sender okay it is only the receiver device 1 is only the sender okay next is the half duplex mode so in half duplex mode each of the devices can both transmit and receive okay both have the capability to send data and also to receive data but they cannot do so at the same time okay it means when one device is transmitting the other one can only receive it cannot transmit at the same time it has to wait for its turn similarly when the other device is transmitting the first device has to wait it cannot transmit at that time it can only receive okay so this is the half duplex mode <coughs> sorry an example of half duplex mode is uh, it can be um, for example uh, over a walkie talkie you know when one person is communicating you know the security personnel they send a message then they say over only then 
the from the other side the data is transmitted the other person speaks they do not uh, it is not allowed that one person speaks in between the conversation so one message is transmitted followed by over then the other uh, transmission takes place from the other side so you can consider that as a half duplex mode okay both uh, parties are uh, capable of transmitting but they do not do it at the same time instantaneously okay so that is the half duplex mode over the walkie talkie conversation so this is what the half duplex mode takes, uh, looks like so both the direction the data flow takes place in both directions from device 1 to device 2 and device 2 to device 1 but the transmission from device 1 to device 2 takes place over a certain time period uh, marked by 1 and the transmission from device 2 to device 1 takes place in another time period time frame marked by 2 okay so this is what the half duplex mode looks like then we have is the full duplex mode so in full duplex mode both devices can transmit and receive simultaneously okay it is just like a two-way street so popular example of full duplex mode is the telephonic conversation so the conversations you have over the mobile phone you can speak at any time okay you can interrupt the other person at any time at that instant you don't have to wait for the other person to finish his uh, con uh, what he's or he or she is saying you can uh, you can say whatever you want at any at any time so the mobile uh, telephonic conversations are an example of the full duplex mode here both the devices can transmit and receive simultaneously that is they can send or receive data at the same time so this is the full duplex mode which the example of which is the telephonic conversations here the direction of data takes place in both directions at the same time in between the two devices so here we have discussed some of the basic concepts related to data communications from the characteristics components the forms of data the modes of com data communication so I hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much